So President Obama said, we need to do something about that. Well, the House passed a stimulus package at the tune of $819 billion. And just yesterday or so, the Senate passed a bill at $838 billion after Senator Specter, Senator Snow, and Senator Collins offered an amendment to cut the budget by $108 billion because it had gone well over $900 billion. So now we have a $838 billion budget on the Senate side and a $819 billion budget on the House side. They're puts and takes. They are, as we speak, engaged in a conference back and forth. They're different ideas, different policies, different approaches. Some of them are the same, but there are some distinct differences. Those of us who are the mayors are saying, look, we're not the problems, we're the solution. If you engage in putting as much money as possible into the cities, we can spend the money faster. This is where people live out their lives. This is where people live out their hopes and their dreams and their aspirations. On the House side, they tended to agree. On the Senate side, you know, if you're a senator, you're, you're statewide, right? So you, have, so you come with much broader ideas. I'm sure that uh, Mayor Newsom and I both, both agree is that the extent to which more money comes to the cities, we're in much better shape. Now, I mentioned public safety. There's $1 billion for the COPS program. And in the House side, they modified it so that mayors like us would be able to get some of this money to employ police officers, which brings some relief to the local budgeting. But $1 billion. I mean, when you think about all of the cities that have major public safety issues, $1 billion is a drop in the bucket. So it's not going to ultimately redound to our benefit. And even if this great stimulus package moves through, we're still going to have to find balancing measures. I don't see anything out there that allows us to handle this hundred plus million dollar deficit that we're dealing with. We're going to have to face those issues. Hopefully these resources come to us. I see money coming to us in uh, school construction. I think millions of dollars will come to our respective cities in that regard. That's going to generate employment. We have at least $2.3 billion in infrastructure projects. $2.3 billion. How much money will we receive? some millions of dollars, but nowhere near 2.3 billion, but I think it's going to be important. We pioneered a program in Oakland called the Green Jobs Corps, which gained national attention and has now become rapidly becoming national policy. Simple, elegant idea, fight poverty and fight pollution simultaneously. And so I think because we were in the front of the line with a demonstration project, green jobs money I think will come to Oakland uh, because we're out front and we've been taking a leadership role in that regard. I think we're going to benefit from a number of these dollars, but the immediate impact is not going to help us address the deficit need. Just finally, I'll just give you my perspective. A big portion of this, of this stimulus package is in tax cuts and tax rebates. I want to give you my point of departure. I'm not an economist, but I don't think tax rebates do a great deal to stimulate the economy. Frankly, I would have taken $750 billion and put it all in problem solving and job development, handled the issue of tax rebates at another time in another place. If there was any tax incentives that we would put in this bill, it would have been tax incentives to small business to generate employment and expand their opportunities. Finally, if we're going to be globally competitive and people much more brilliant than this person has said, there are at least three or four areas of investment that we must uh, embrace. Infrastructure, research, education, and I would add a fourth, health, because the health of your workforce is fundamentally important. So it's against that backdrop that we should be able to evaluate this stimulus package. 
How much money is going into infrastructure and will it help us be competitive? How much money is going into research and development because in the challenges of global warming, the more money we put into research and development, the more opportunities there are for, for people to develop new ideas for incubator uh, 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 business opportunities, new technologies uh, going forward. Thirdly, the extent to which we engage in education and in workforce development, uh, that becomes extraordinarily important because we need to make sure that we have a competent, capable, well-informed, well-educated, well-trained workforce. And finally, you know, I used to say when we were fighting, battling apartheid in South Africa, that the only industrialized nation in the world other than the United States that had not come to grips with a national approach to healthcare was South Africa. Now that South Africa is a new nation, they have embraced universal health care and we're still debating the issue. Something's wrong with that picture. So in conclusion, I would say that Oakland has to address a myriad issues. I'm hoping very much that the stimulus package will help us. Mayor Newsom and I are, are, are perfectly positioned to have some impact upon that. And at the end of the day, I hope that the optimistic uh, forecasts that our previous speakers engaged in are true and that some kind of way it won't be as bad sometime in this year and it'll get better next year. But my view is that we're going to be struggling with this for some time. Thank you very much.